Johnny and Dolly. The team is supported by ableauctions.ca. Closing your business? We can help. Oh, yeah. All of our guests today, including Ross Tucker, standing by, sponsored by Passant Motors. Due to popular demand, Passant Motors is continuing its 31st anniversary celebrations. Check out PassantMotors.com to see all the great deals. Learn more at B-A-S-A-N-T-Motors.com as we bring in Ross Tucker from the Ross Tucker Football Podcast, Westwood One, and CBS Sports. Ross, thanks for doing this. As always, how are you, sir? I'm great, Donnie, but did you forget how to spell Bassan? I for did. A second there? You, you know, <laughs> there, was like, there was like a three second <laughs> pregnant pause between the A and the S in Bassan Motors. They've had this anniversary for 31 years. How do you not know it's B A S A N T? You know what? Give uh, it to him, Ross. As I was saying, and I'm thinking, I'm not saying this properly. I don't think anybody will catch it. Thanks for having my back, buddy. I appreciate it. Yeah, no problem. You no, know, it's so funny. My, uh, my daughter's. Just had an audition yesterday mm. for a play, and I was telling them, listen, you just keep going. Yeah. You know, even if you mess yeah. up a little bit in life, when you're in the media, when daddy does a speech, or I'm on TV or radio, if you just keep going, nobody will notice, or very rarely, and you just keep going. So I kind of went against what I taught my daughter <laughs> yeah. yesterday, Johnny, was yeah. right there. Yeah. <laughs> hey, what's it like being a sports fan in Philadelphia right now? The Phillies are going to the World Series. Eagles are unbeaten. People in hockey love what I know they lost yesterday, but torts with the Flyers seems to be working, and the Sixers have star power. What's it like? Pretty darn good, man. I, yeah. I can't remember it like this in a long time. I think the combination especially – of the Phillies' surprising run to the World Series. I mean, they've been dominant. What, mm -hmm. have they lost two mm -hmm. playoff games and three series? So far, they lost once to the Braves and once to the Padres, and it was just so unexpected. Plus, I think people thought the Eagles would be pretty good this year. I don't know that they thought they'd be the last undefeated team, and it's been that way for a couple of weeks now. So they're on fire just because – there wasn't super crazy high expectations for either. I think both of them, they thought, hey, make the playoffs, maybe make some noise. So I think sort of the fact that this wasn't expected makes it even more rewarding. It's cool for me because, you know, my daughters, you know, we, we live outside of Philadelphia. So to, to watch the Bryce Harper home run with them and experience with them at age 10 and 9, and they play softball, so they kind of get it, and then when the <laughs> Phillies won and jump up and down, kind of one of the first cool, um, really cool parenting fandom moments. You know, I was waiting for you to make a mistake there <laughs> so I could just jump all over it, but, man, you were perfect. Ten yeah. out of ten, buddy. Hey, you we'll get to football in a second. He's a polarizing figure. I know you've tweeted some stuff out, but you mentioned him there. Are you a Bryce Harper fan? Well, of course I am. Yeah, I mean, I'm, I'm a Phillies fan. And, by the way, I'll be the first one to admit it. I am like your classic bandwagon jumper for non-football sports, right? <laughs> yeah. Like for the Flyers, I barely know any Flyers. Carter Hart's their goalie. That's about the extent of me right now. Guess what? The Flyers go on a playoff run. I'll start tweeting about the Flyers. <laughs> I'll be I'll, I'll act like I've been in it the whole time. I'm the same way with the Sixers and the Phillies. Some of my high school buddies that are like diehard Phillies fans, they're not happy right now with me because they're like, oh, Ross been a Phillies fan on Twitter for two weeks now. <laughs> and I, so I, I texted back the group message and I said, listen, this is just very rewarding for those of us that live and die by every pitch all summer. You know, this playoff run's been amazing. <laughs> hey, Ross, um, Still sticking with football, but l let me explain myself here. I have to do that a, a lot. But there's video out there. The Canucks right now are playing really, really poorly. There's video out there right now of two of the players arguing publicly on the ice before they get to the dressing room. We kind of touched on this last week with, with Tom Brady. But do teams, uh, do players have to get along? Do they have to be best friends? Is, is it okay to have arguments in, in order for teams to be successful? You know, it's funny that you say that 
Because I think, and I think this goes for almost anything in life. I would much rather have arguing than not talking to each other. Much rather. In anything, right? Like, it's normal to disagree. Mm -hmm. It's normal to not see something the same way. You talk it out. Maybe you yell at each other. And then you move on. You appreciate where the other person's coming from. That's business. That's relationships. That's certainly sports. I much prefer that. In my opinion, when you really need to be concerned is when guys aren't even talking to each other. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Right? Or they're not even acknowledging it. Because you know what they are doing then? They're complaining to their agent about it. They're complaining to their 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 friends and family about it and then you have and then the friends and family say yeah that guy was wrong he shouldn't have done that they're doing this they should be highlighting you more then the stuff festers behind the scenes i don't care if it's public i mean you'd rather have that be in the locker room you'd rather have it be behind closed doors but at least they're talking it out and telling each other where what the other one thinks Ross, uh, you mentioned bandwagons. Uh, You know whose bandwagon is full right now, the Seattle Seahawks. Uh, They wake up this morning first in their division. Did you see this coming? Because everybody, when they trade to Russell, everybody's like a rebuild, rebuild. And I mean, they're in first place. It's unbelievable. Well, first of all, I didn't expect the rest of the division to play this poorly with the Niners, Rams, and Cardinals. That's part of it. They're all very middling, very mediocre right now. But no, anybody that thought Geno Smith would play this well, I don't think there's very many. There might be a couple. I certainly did not feel that way. I thought uh, the ownership made the poor decision. I probably would have stuck with Russell Wilson and yeah. and told Pete Carroll and John Schneider to hit the road. So that mm. tells you how much I know. At least on this segment, at least I am giving you outstanding Vancouver Canucks insight because clearly <laughs> my NFL stuff, I have no idea what I'm talking about. I did not think the Seahawks would be able to do this. I really didn't. Uh, hat tip to John Schneider. Their rookies are awesome. Yeah. Like across the board, Woolen, both offensive tackles, Kenneth Walker. That's what's so encouraging yeah. is that they're not just playing pretty well, but their young guys look like foundational pieces to build around and get this thing going again. Did you predict, and now we're talking about predictions, the Packers, three and four, they've lost three straight. What's going on there? Well, both the Packers and the Bucks. I and talked Bucks. about this today yeah. On, yeah. on the Ross Tucker football podcast. This is real now. Yeah. That doesn't mean they can't turn it around and they can't play better. But this isn't like a one-week uh, or a two-week. No, this is – this is who these teams are right now. And this is who these quarterbacks are. And they and they deserve some of the blame. You know, we're so hesitant to blame Aaron Rodgers, back-to-back MVP, to blame Tom Brady, greatest of all time. First of all, both those guys need to play better. Yeah. Secondly, they deserve some of the responsibility here. They're, they're not all in. Yep. Aaron Rodgers loses Devontae Adams. So he's got two rookie receivers – and he skips the whole offseason program, mm. the whole thing. You don't think that would have helped getting a little bit on the same page? Now he's saying we got to simplify things. Well, maybe you could have figured out, Aaron, in May to simplify things instead of in October. And then for Brady, you, you know, I played with him. I love the guy because he's a total psycho and he's all in. Except he's not this year. He's not. He skipped some stuff in the off season. He skipped ten or eleven days of training camp, which I've never even heard of. And then he skips a walkthrough after he goes to crafts, wedding. He just he can't make the argument that he's all in. He can't make that argument, and I think it ha- is having an impact. Although, listen, it's not his fault. Mike Evans drops yeah. the yeah. touchdown pass. It's not his fault that the defense can't stop the Panthers running the balls. It's not all on Brady. But he definitely deserves some of the responsibility. Uh, they they lost yesterday, forty four twenty three to Kansas City, Ross. But what's Christian McCaffrey going to do the to the for the Forty ers Well, I thought he played pretty well. Um, clearly, they've had a bunch of guys in and out of the lineup at running back because they get hurt a lot. Here's what I think they did it as much as anything. Debo Samuel is the guy that teams are most worried about when you're playing the Niners, right? It's like, where's Debo? Oh, he's lined up over there. Okay, when he's over there, they could do this or this. 
Oh, he's coming in motion. Here comes Debo. Wait, he's always oh, in the backfield. <laughs> now they kind of have two of those guys, right? Now they kind of have two guys that you have to be wondering, like, where's Waldo? Where is this guy? <laughs> and I think it makes it much, much tougher on the defense. I'm not sure Kyle Shanahan really has had the opportunity to draw up plays to take advantage of that yet. I mean, he just got there on Friday. So I think he had to just run a couple of their basic plays. What he does with him and how he uses him moving forward which will be a lot more interesting. B-A-S-A-N-T <laughs> Motors. There you go. 31st Plus. year anniversary because it's been so popular. Yeah. Yes, yes. Uh, thanks for this. And uh, we're envious here in Vancouver about what's going on sports-wise in Philadelphia. Really? Let's go Flyers. Yeah. <laughs> Torts. Yeah. We're focusing on another hockey team here. <laughs> yeah. Thank, thanks for that, Ross. Appreciate it. See you guys. You bet.